Are you guys all having a good time? Yeah. Yes. yes. Good. Good. So um, I guess this is the part where you can ask any questions. <laughs> yeah. You can ask any questions and I'll, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Oh, we're waiting for them to set up. Fine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Never mind. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Matt. Are we waiting to get set up? Or? This is it. Okay, okay. Whenever you're ready. Great. No, I didn't know. Okay. okay. You want to wait for the video camera? Yeah. That's up to you guys. Right? Sure. They seem ready. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So, Chris, do you want to introduce her? Oh, sure. Oh. Did you have something? This was you. Oh, this was me? Yeah. I just told you now. Didn't you? We don't need anything. That was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you hear me just uh, Hi, I'm Yancey Butler. Hey, nice doing. The star of which play and magic you. and television and movies <laughs> and there she is in front of you live in the Thank classroom. You. Ask questions. There you go. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do you have anything in the works now that you'd be looking for? Well, I, a couple people have asked me. I have two films that are coming out. I don't know when. Um, one is a sci-fi movie. Uh, it, well, I think they sold it to sci-fi, and I played a vampire in it. Um, Lilith. She was actually the first Eve, apparently. That's Eve Wolfbane, Lord. right? And, I'm sorry? That's Wolfbane, right? Wolfbane, yes. And, um, and then the other one is I do a cameo in a Nicolas Cage film called Kick-Ass which is based on a comic book with, which they're just starting to come out with now, which is, uh, it's a, a, from what I saw on the set, it was a really, really good film. So that's good. Let's hear it for Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know who's publishing it, but the guy who, who directed the film, I believe, was doing the comic book as well, and it was his idea and creation. His name is Matthew Vaughn. And a little tidbit of information. He's married to Claudia Schiffer, and uh, they were in London, so that's where it was shot. But it's, it's a very good film. There's my good friend Mason. He's going to kill me. Let's give it up for Mason. He's going to kill me. I just came in to watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what they all said. You want to sit there? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. I remember you from Man and Machine and. Witchblade was the one I, uh, I was. Uh, I was a fan of the. I'm a fan of the comic book Witchblade. Were you? Uh, have you? When you were, got the role for the Witchblade. Have you read the comic book to get an idea of what the character is about? I. I actually. That's a good question. I did not have a clue uh, what the comic book was about. Um, originally, um, Oliver Stone uh, and I are. We haven't spoken in a while, but we were friends, and he was originally involved in uh, Witchblade and the movie, and um, we had talked about that, um, and then he bowed out, but when I had um, gotten the part, and then I looked at the comic book, you know, just I thought, oh, I'll look at the comic, I was like, oh my god, what did I get myself into, because as you can all see, she's a little scantily clad, and it's, it's a bit racy, um, so I didn't Wait, I was a little scared, but uh, but so no, I was unfamiliar with the comic book before we did the series, and, and then as the uh, show went on, I, we kept I kept looking at more comic books, and it's a pr it's a pretty good comic, um, but yeah, I was uh, I couldn't see myself running down with you know tendrils around me and heels screaming freeze, you know we had to deviate a bit from that comic book, but uh, no, I was unfamiliar, and, and the great thing about it is. Uh, that the fans of the comic book, on the whole, I hear, were very happy with the uh, show, which which was, that's what we were concerned about, that they would not be happy with it. And uh, people seem to have really liked the transition that we had to make, so it's very good. Yes, sir? Yes, uh, as you very well know, uh, Top Cow is doing a feature film version of Rich Play. Yes. Has they been in touch with you just to offer your cameo up for us because you were the original Witch Blade. Well, thank you. Yeah, we, we definitely talked about it. At the moment, it's totally on hold um, and uh, for reasons that I don't know why. Um, but uh, but it is on hold. So hopefully your guess is as good as mine at the moment. Oh, come on, don't be shy. Do you have any funny stories <laughs> from the set? Oh, wait. <laughs> what, did, what did you think of the um, Witch Blade piece? Like, you know, I thought it 
was great for a man that was about 16 feet tall and weighed about 800 pounds. It didn't fit me. They didn't match it to my hand. So uh, actually, somebody was asking me this earlier. The knuckles on the thing were like out to here, so it just kind of flip-flopped around. And, and uh, to answer one of the funniest stories that I do have is when it turned into this big gauntlet and, and uh, Roger Daltrey, as some of you know, was was in our Ooh. show, he was playing the uh, priest who was actually a devil, and then he so enjoyed working on the show. Yeah, exactly, and uh, he so enjoyed working on the show that he actually um, wanted to do another one. So he played the devil again, but in disguise, this time he was in drag, he was a fortune teller, tarot reading, um, he was so funny. But at one point we were fighting and he's like, she's going to kill me, the thing's going to fly off, why don't you get her something? So he actually really stood up for me because the thing was seriously, uh, it was, it didn't fit my hand, and, which was odd because it was named Witchblade. It's not like it was a new, con you know, concept that we came up with. So you would think that they would have been a little more, uh, you know, aware of that. But uh, yeah, it was dangerous. I almost decapitated Roger. That wouldn't have been, uh, that would have been really unfortunate. What show business ambitions do you have now? What would you like to do? Um, <laughs> Spider-Man, at the moment, that's all I can think about. Um, you know, I, I just like storytelling, in all honesty. And, uh, you know, um, what ambitions I have to work. SAG has been kind of having this pending strike that's been going on, so we've kind of been in a holding pattern, um, most of us as a whole. Um, and uh, it's been very difficult for a lot of actors. Um, some of them are losing health insurance. It's been it's been really pro problematic and, and quite frightening, actually. I mean, um, you know, I believe in the things that they're holding out for, um, and I believe that they just recently just last week they just settled. Um, we'll see what that means. But my ambitions are to work. So, so you don't have a particular wish list to play Julia or to do something uh, of a character that's in mind that you have an affection for? Or like well, you know what? I always I always choose the parts that, that I can either learn something from or something I've never done before or, in all honesty, a place I've never been. Or, um, for instance, I did the uh, John Woo's movie, Hard Target, with Jean-Claude Van Damme because I like John Woo's work, and it was his first American film here. So I'll, I'll make choices based on kind of that. Um, you know, there was a, a very uh, not seen uh, movie that I did called The Last Letter, in which I play a very meek, very shy. So I, I like to play characters that aren't, you know, I'll kick your ass and, and basically anything but cops, um, which is, uh, but things that I'll learn something from. So that's kind of, I can't really answer, you know. My, my favorite films, and people also ask me this, is stuff like His Girl Friday, and you know, uh, I did, uh, I love Hitchcock, he's one of my favorites, so I'm more of an old film person. Uh, Saturday Night's kind of the Turner classics. That's me and my exciting life, but uh, that's what I tend to do the most. Yes, sir. Which place? That was that was uh, on TNT. Is that right? Correct. Were they? I I am a big fan of uh, Babylon Five, and they were going to make Babylon Five Crusade, and they like massacred it. And there were stories about how how hard on that show they were to work with. Were they difficult to work with on Which Blade? Were they? Were there like notes coming down all the time? Oh, from, TNT. From TNT, yeah. Um. No, not as as a matter of fact, they were quite accommodating. It was really? it was a little difficult because um, we were actually shooting in Toronto, um, so we didn't have a lot of studio execs around. Um, and as a matter of fact, it wasn't just TNT; it was the first merger between Warner Brothers and TNT. So um, so I was very proud to be a part of that, and I was happy that they decided to base it on a comic book and base it on a woman hero, um, which I thought was kind of daring. And now TNT has kind of followed, not that I was the first one, but they kind of followed the Saving Grace and, you know, some really great shows. So, um, so no, they, they were very accommodating. And their publicity department is incredible. They really um, did a great job doing that. To the point where, to answer anybody else's question that hasn't been asked, is, you know, people say, we're so sorry to see the show, you know, canceled. And 
it wasn't supposed to be a show. It was supposed to be a movie, which we did, and that was it. Um, apparently, it got like the highest ratings of any TV movie ever, or something. So, um, so um, then they decided to make it into a series. So we weren't disappointed at the end of two years. We were actually pleasantly surprised when they picked it up for any length of time. It was supposed to be two hours and kind of in and out, and um, it was quite advantageous for them to try to meet the quality of the film on an eight-day schedule every week, and, and I think we accomplished most of that. Yes, my <laughs> Uh, question, uh, actually there's rumors of uh, Megan Fox going to play the uh, witch play from the new movie. What are your thoughts on that or do you have an actress in mind that will be able to play the role? Well, this, I, I have to be honest, I, I, and this isn't saying anything, I honestly don't really know who Megan Fox is. And, and that's not saying anything. I don't know who anybody is. She's in uh, uh, Transformers. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen, I mean, again, I'm sure she's a lovely lady, um, and that's great. Um, I, I, as I say, I, I like to watch the older flicks, so I don't really get to the films a lot or see a lot of television, um, because I'm, I, thank God, I'm usually working, and so when you're working 18 hours a day, you don't get to see, you know, or call your family, let alone see anything on, on TV or, so, um, but that's a nice name. Megan Fox sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you said that that which was shot in Toronto. Was it shot entirely in Toronto, or is there any location shooting whatsoever in New York since you're, you yourself are from New York? Yeah, I'm trying to remember if we ever came to New York, and I'm confusing at this hour of the day some other things that I did. No, we never. We never came to New York. We never came to New York. Um, I was thinking of a series that did Brooklyn South, which was also uh, shot in, it was shot in Los Angeles, but we did do a couple of um, shots here. Some of the exteriors, <coughs> obviously, were, were done in New York, but I wasn't, I wasn't there. Yeah. I know, that one of, a, a very funny story that happened <laughs> on the set is, I don't remember what episode it was. I think it was when Ian Nottingham and Jake are having this big fist fight in some kind of stadium. That must have been a pleasant picture. And uh, <laughs> and um, we had um, the set deck, set, set decorator, had threw out all this garbage and put all this graffiti out, you know, and um, to make it look like New York, because Toronto is a very clean city. Actually, Canada overall is a very clean place. And we broke for lunch, and by the time we came back, the city had already cleaned up uh, the entire set. And and uh, so it, we were down for like two hours doing. It was it was very funny. We came back, and it was like we're, we're not ready to shoot for another hour and a half because they had to throw all this stuff back. So they were on it. The city of Toronto is uh it was quite something, but it was really funny. Dad, uh, when I got to act with my dad, 
that one was uh, that was my favorite. I mean, my real father in real life. So uh, yeah, that was a surprise to me when they hired him. Yeah, I didn't. I, that, I actually had no idea they were doing that at all. Yes, Mike. Uh, actually, uh, if you have seen the Spider-Man films, uh, which one was your favorite? <laughs> I'm sorry, if I what? If you have seen the Spider-Man films, which one was your favorite? I haven't seen the Spider-Man <laughs> I see nothing. I see nothing, so you're my favorite, damn it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, but I know that. That's, it. that's all I know. But yeah, that's about it. Yes, sir. Okay. As an actor, what do you prefer? Uh, television or movies? People always ask me that, and you know what, I don't prefer either one, but there is a huge difference in the mediums, um, <coughs> usually. Uh, movies often, well, you definitely have um, more time to make a film, um, and more time to do individual scenes, um, whereas in a movie, I'm making huge paintbrush generalizations, but you might have, say, you know, a day to shoot a scene. On television, you can shoot up to nine scenes. Uh, I, I liken television to the I Love Lucy episode. I'm dating myself, but the one with the, the chocolate factory, mm -hmm. where they're eating the candy and they can't go fast. Enough, that's television, um, and you work. You know, it's 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 very quick pace because it, if you don't finish it, you have a blank space on the air the next week or two weeks from them, and and the studios don't want that at all. So, um, so I don't prefer either one, but I'd say movies you have more time. Although now they're really cranking them out very quickly um, to save money, and the production I think is is actually often um, compromised. You know, it doesn't look as good. Yes. Um, if they, if they do another um, action movie like um, the, like say if they if they do another Predator movie, will we be on there or or will you? Um, do another comic book based um, movie. Um, I'm sorry, The Predator? Yeah. Uh, or a comic based movie? I don't know. I mean, I, I think that, um, well, we don't know about Witchblade, but it's certainly, you know, it's fun to be on a comic. It's certainly coming to the, I mean, it's, it's been coming to the front a lot. So, um, and it's pretty cool that people are coming up with stuff like, you know, Transform or Transformers and, um, you know, there's a lot that people are doing with their imagination and their creativity, and I think that that's incredible. But um, romantic comedy is something to all of you know. Thanks for asking. Yes. How did you start like doing, getting those like types of roles? Like, did you have an agent that said like, you'd be good for this, or did you just walk yeah? In? Well, I I um uh, um. It, yes, pretty much my first job, for the most part, my first major job was a show that uh, I did for Dick Wolf called Man and Machine, and she was a very, um, she was a very tough, well she was a robot, but she was a very kind of tough action oriented character. So, um, not that I got stereotyped, the, the things that most people have seen I've, I've been stereotyped in, but I've done a lot, a lot of other stuff where I played dance instructors, or I've done this meek kind of shy, as I talked about in, in the last letter. Um, but yeah, they think all of a sudden that you're this kick-ass chick who can, you know, kick ass, and in all honesty, I don't know how to do I fake it well, is what I hear. But uh, but yes, you, you certainly, people get interested in you, the producers, for certain types of characters. And uh, so that's how that works out. Yes. What's your next project? I actually, I, I, I can't really discuss that. Um, I'm, I'm in negotiations with something, but, uh, but look out for it because I, I think if it works out, it's going to be very interesting. Cool. It's going to be very interesting. I'll look out for it. Thank you. And can you at least say if that's a movie or a show or? It's going to be a movie. Okay. Yeah. Any info on Wolfsbane? Yeah, I don't know when it's coming out. Oh, but... What to talk about that one? Wolf Spain, well, I kind of, uh, that, uh, actually, it's funny, I did this film that plays a lot, um, called Basilix the Serpent King. I, I, I don't ask me, it's thank you, side you. Side. Side. <laughs> all the time, Every all day. the time, very and, uh, I play this very, that's what I mean about different characters, like, she's this very svelte, sexy, kind of dodo-ish evil character, and, um, 
Oh, I actually had a blast doing that. That was shot in Bulgaria, of all places. But um, um, what was your question? Oh, that the that the one of the guys who was in that who plays he's a blonde-haired scientist. He actually directed Wolvesbane. So that's how I got offered that part. Um, and uh, from what I know, it's a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool um, looking film. I saw some of the playbacks. That I haven't seen the whole thing, but I, I, and it looks really great. They have some special effects I know that are just mind blowing. Um, and it's scary. It's scary. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Actually, pretty good. Yeah. How long were you on location in uh, uh, Bulgaria? And what was it? Like? Bulgaria was great. Um, I was there, I guess, for about almost a, a month, and uh, Bulgaria was fascinating. Because, because uh, they have uh, this one production company that I was working for had done 22 films in that year. I was there in September, and that's what I mean by cranking out these films. They're just they're money making machines, and they obviously, if they're playing all the time, they do make the money. But Bulgaria, being that you know we were in the capital, Sofia, and uh, it's amazing to meet people that, um, not to get too deep, but you know, that remember the army coming in their house and telling them to leave. Um, you know, people that were kicked out of their homes because of, uh, you know, whatever, because of dictatorship and, uh, you know, people who were my age, who, um, you know, their father was a doctor and worked very hard their whole life, so they might have had a nicer home. and. Uh, were basically saying, as of now, we want you to get your stuff, and we now own this house, and we came home. So it's really quite interesting to talk to some of the people there, and how it's uh, becoming uh, more westernized. And they're really embracing it. They're really embracing it. Um, but you think about something as dramatic as that is happening, like in World War II, or people that are in their, you know, 70s, or, you know, and, and here was somebody who was several years younger than myself talking about how scary that was she tried to hide under the bed, you know, it's, um, and how they kicked her grandmother out of the street. I mean, it was, um, it was, uh, it was hard to say, it's hard to hear. Yes, sir? Yeah, um, a lot of people seem, as far as production, seem to pick Bulgaria a lot because the production costs are really good and the craftsmanship is amazing. Yeah. Just like in Prague or, or Czech, you know, the, the craftsmanship on, like, every, uh, on the set to like beyond belief, like um, in the recent grudge that came to uh, DVD, uh, they did that in Bulgaria, and they replicated um, what they did in the second one, which was based in America and Tokyo. The apartment that they used, they replicated it there, and it was like exactly from the second one, everything. Like, and they did in Bulgaria the third one, and yeah. like, everything came out like they, they have like great craftsmanship, and the cost to do you know stuff over there is like the labor is pretty cheap over there, so yeah. a lot of people tend to go over there to do uh, production stuff. Well, the, it, that's a good point, and, and I totally 1,000% agree with you. I mean, um, the thing is, is that the people are so eager to work over there. Yes, the dollar factor used to be what Canada was, but it's not what Canada is anymore. So they're trying to go to the outer region. They're trying to go wherever they can to make it for cheap, because yeah. as I said, they're just, they're knocking these films out. And I've never met a crew um, that has been so eager please and, and to, I, I've met great crews so don't get me wrong but but they're so eager to please and so happy to be well not under the thumb of, of oppression yeah. that that I, they really celebrate that and they're very hard-working and they're you know people haven't seen their talent before and we'll be seeing a lot more of it I know of a lot of American actors who have actually moved there and are working so, a lot uh, more than we're working here I know Bruce Campbell uh was there like plenty of times, and he mentioned about you know that uh, it's the, the the hard work and the, the labor costs and everything, and the traffic should be really uh, really good. It, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Yeah, they're 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 happy. It's nice. It makes a difference. Yes. You have an actual MySpace page because there are a lot of posters out there pretending to be you. I know. Uh, you mean <laughs> you mean a Facebook thing? Uh, well, both Facebook both. and MySpace. No. That's not me. Okay. I was just telling somebody downstairs that actually, I ran into a high school friend of mine, and she's like, you know, I signed up to be your friend, and you didn't get back to me. I was, I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm still fascinated with the fax machine. I can barely check my email, so that is not me. I have absolutely no idea how to even do that. So I assured her that 
no, I did not hate her that I, that I, you know, would take her telephone number and use the telephone. That's what I do. Um, and I like to see people in person, but uh, no, that's not me. But thank you for asking. No problem. Yeah. Pass around. Yeah, please. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, you, one of the recent films you did was, uh, as you said, Kick Ass. Uh, did you have any scenes with Nicolas Cage? And if you did, uh, how was it working with you? I didn't have any scenes with Nicolas Cage. I met him several years ago, very briefly, um, and he was a very nice man. But I didn't have any scenes with him. I play the his nemesis's. It's hard to say. Nemesis's wife. Mm -hmm. um, so the big mob king. I play. Mm -hmm his wife, Angie D'Amico, Angie D'Amico, so I did, I never got to meet uh, him on that set, uh, but I heard he was really fantastic. Your yeah. role is basically, let's say, can it compare with, uh, like, the wife of Tony Soprano in the Soprano? Well, that's ba basically, basically. I mean, smaller, it's a big action film, and it's about the action, it's about the kids, but, but, uh, she's a little more, I went a little more campier mm -hmm. than that. I mean, you have to, but uh, but yeah, it's, it was very fun. It was very fun. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, I, I want to go back. Um, and, uh, you did. Uh, I can't think of the movie, but you did a movie with uh, Wesley Snipes. You, you played a character that um, parachute Paris covered. Yes. Um, what was it, it like uh, working with? What was it like working with uh, Wesley Snipes? Oh, Wesley's great. Love Wesley. Love Wesley. Had a great time on that film. Had a great time working with him. Um, it was one of the, John Badham, who directed Saturday Night uh, Fever, I mean, he, it, the whole experience was just incredible. Wesley's amazing, and he's actually, he and Jean-Claude taught me a lot of, when I started getting cast as, you know, kick it ass chick girl, they taught me a lot of stuff that people just I knew intuitively, which I didn't. Um, he's an amazing, Wesley's an amazing choreographer. There was a fight sequence that was all planned out, and he arrived on the set, and he was like, you know what, I want to do it this way, and I think it'll look better this way. And uh, he was dead on. He's, he's an amazing choreographer. Yeah, but especially, especially, um, like, um, all, especially like, um, the old Blade movies and stuff, yeah. especially with, with Van, Van Damme, because yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got you also work with, with Van Damme on, on that movie as well. Right, yeah. yeah. No, they're both, they're both, yeah, they're amazing choreographers. Many people just think that they're kicking and that stuff takes a lot of, there's a, almost a balletic movement to that stuff. And you can get really hurt if you don't do it correctly. So um, they're both incredible. They're both incredible. But Wesley's very funny. I had some very good times with Wesley. Now what type of role is the queen in Tales of the Ancient Empire? I what? don't know, Mike. Were you? Isn't, I didn't. Isn't that who you were playing for Tales of an Ancient Empire? No, I, I had heard about that film, but no, that didn't. I didn't do that. Oh. You yeah. Didn't do that down there. No, I don't know who did that, but yeah, there were rumors going around that I did that, but no, I didn't. I didn't do that. Unless I don't remember. But I didn't. Who's your Facebook? <laughs> What's that? Who's your Facebook friend? <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, there we go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm married with eight alien kids and have five legs. <laughs> <laughs> the alien octomom. Really? Yes. People trying to get into the film industry or TV industry. The advice I give for people that are trying to get into it to 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 go to school and to study, to remember to have fun. Don't quit your day job. Yeah. And don't quit. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And um, you know, remember that you're storytelling. It's one of the oldest arts that we have. To not get caught up in all the other stuff. That bells really, and whistles. Yeah, the business, yeah, bells and whistles. Yeah. No problem. Yes. Talk about uh, making Let It Be Me. Mm How's -hmm. that? Oh, talk about uh, Let It Be Me was a uh, film in which I play a, a dance instructor, uh, and not a lot of people have seen it. I actually haven't seen the entire thing until. It, uh, a friend of mine, Mike, has given it to me, and I will watch it soon. It was, uh, a great film, from what I did see of it, it involved uh, Patrick Stewart and Jennifer Beals and Campbell Scott, um, and my favorite, Leslie Caron, who did Gigi, and I, she's like an American ambassador to this. She's one of the main reasons I did it, and uh, it, I had to study how to become a dance instructor for two months before we even started filming. 
that, you know, bleeding feet, the whole thing. Um, and, uh, and, you know, working out, it was eight hour days. And then we started filming, but uh, Leslie Caron was just incredible. And Patrick and I, my favorite thing about that is Patrick took me to the Pret-a-Porter, which was a movie at that time that was coming out, as his date, and we got our picture in the Times, and people said, are you going out with Patrick? And I said, don't, I wish, but I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a very lovely movie. It's a really nice movie. Campbell Scott was really good. Incredible actor. Yes, sir. As an actress, what do you prefer, comedy or drama? I, I like them both. You know, I like them both. Uh, most of the stuff I do is drama. I mean, you know, I most until recently, most people are like, why cast her in a comedy? You know, she's all serious all the time and everything. And, and, and you get me in a room, and it's like she does smile. You know, so <laughs> I, I prefer anything that's good writing. You know, and, and that where the characters fit and that people will enjoy either way. Both are important. Both the masks are important. You know, that's what that's what theater is all about. If you like good writing, what do you read in your spare time? And do you do you ever read something that you wish you might have the ability to translate to the screen and what might that be? Well, I think a lot of um, Somebody asked me, and I have to be honest. Right now, I'm 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 reading uh, uh, the Sue Grafton novels. You know, A is for alibi, and B is for this, and C is for. I, I did kind of quick, fast, you know, uh, things like that. But when I, it's hard for me to be working and read. I can't work and read a book at the same time because then I'm in two different stories. That's why I like crossword puzzles. You can, you know, they call you. We're ready. You know, we're ready for you right now. I put down the crossword puzzle and go to work. I'm not like in, you know, 18th century, you know, so, um, but that's a good question. That's a good question. I wish I could answer it more intelligently than I can in this hour, but thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. I've been going to these conventions, like, since 1985. What's it like on the other side of the table? I mean, it's so cool to come and say, oh, so-and-so's going to be here, and this artist is going to be here, and this actress or actor is going to be here, or this writer's going to be here, you know, and we get all charged up. but. You're sitting here watching the tide come in and out all day, <laughs> you know, you, sometimes for two days in a row. What's that like? Uh, you know what? Uh, I was explaining this to somebody the other day that I don't do, th I haven't done theater in a very long time, you know. So in theater, if you say something funny, they laugh. If, you know, you do a, a job well done, you get an applause. In my line of work, you know, movies and television, they, the crew says, okay, is she in focus? We're moving on. So it's not a lot of, so it's nice. It's wonderful to hear that you've touched somebody's lives or that you got them through a particular hard time in their life or that you made them laugh or that you made them cry or that you scared them or that they wanted to try parachuting after that <laughs> or, you know, anything. It's, yeah. it's a real gift because I don't get, I don't, I don't get that opportunity. Um, so it's it's an honor to to hear that you know that it's a joy to be watched, you know, because I can storytell to myself, but you know that's which I often do when people think I'm crazy when I'm reciting my lines walking down the street by myself. But it's nice to know that you've touched people's lives and that you've made a difference, and I and I mean that from the bottom of my heart because I I don't get that and uh, to make an impression. Um, that's, I, that's the whole point of the job. Barry Morse, who, uh, who, uh, the late Barry Morse, who I've met several times, used to call it meeting the customers. And on that note, <laughs> yes. Would you do Broadway in front of a live, live audience then? I would love to. Yeah. I would love to, absolutely. So would you prefer the feedback right away, or do you like getting it in after? It's, it's, yeah. I don't know if I prefer it, it would just be, I'll tell you this, there's nothing like doing theater because at 7.59, everybody who's working on the show, their energy is focused on one thing, and it's that curtain going up in one minute, or a couple minutes afterwards. In movies and in television, I work, then I go away and lighting does their job, and the cameras come in, and then I come back, 
and then some people take time off, and then the sound guy. So it's very compartmentalized. There is nothing like the magic of the curtain going up at 8 o'clock where everybody is focused on that one thing. And uh, there's, there's no feeling like it. I haven't felt it in quite some time. So you haven't worked live audiences recently? Not in a while. Not in a while. Yes? Should we be able to take your picture? Absolutely. Okay. I just Seems like a couple people are, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself, and I'm going to be sitting at my table, so certainly please feel free to come by, and, uh, and I appreciate the questions, I really do. It gives me a chance to think about what I do, and I want to give you guys a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I hope you guys had a good day. Thank you. Yay. Oh, greetings. All right. Sorry, I missed you up with somebody else.